Hello everyone, it has been a full four weeks since my last video and I'm gonna get into why that is. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm so sorry about that, but um, I am moving journals. So this was the journal that I used at the first half of the year. I actually thought that I would be able to do the full year in one journal, but that did not turn out. <laughs> um, so we're switching into this new journal. And as you can see, they are exactly the same because I am trying to like not buy a journal that is 20 something dollars or 20,000 won um, and these journals are actually sold for 8,000 on Onurichi so I will put the link to these journals in the description box if you guys are interested in starting but you don't really want to spend like a whole lot of money on um, supplies and yeah let's get started so first I'm going to start off by showing you guys what my bullet journal looked like for the first half of 2021 if we open up the cover we see that I have my number here just in case in I lost my journal at any point uh, thankfully that never happened but you know um, it was a precaution that I felt was kind of necessary you know things could happen and then we flip to what I used as the cover page um, I've seen a few people who will actually glue these two parts together because this first page is partially connected to here as you can kind of see um, but I decided to just you know fold it as best as I could and this actually creased really nicely and I drew my cover page on this page and we went with like a retro kind of lo-fi themed drawing here and the theme for the year was meant to be communication so we have like an old an old style telephone um, the PCs that we used to use back in the 90s and early 2000s and then a postal office uh, box and I was also trying to combine communication with the self. So self-care, self-discipline, um, self-love, all of that thing, all of those things. We're moving on to my grid spacing, which I saw a lot of people use, and I thought it would be a good idea to have. So we have my grid spacing and my key. Now, my grid spacing and key will look a lot different in my next journal, but they will still serve, they will still be there uh, because these are helpful tools. I did find it a little difficult to have these in the front simply because I am not the best at flipping back and forth between the front page of my journal and what page I'm currently on. Then we have my future log, which you can tell I used a lot. This was actually one of the most helpful tools in this entire um, journal because if I knew something was happening in July but it was March, then I could simply write it here and then when I do my July spread, I know what things I need to do and where to mark them for what weeks. Uh, so that was actually really, really helpful. Next up, we had a self-care chart, and on this left side, I did my own kind of spread. It was very simple, as you can see, but essentially it was things that I wanted to experiment or try new things. Um, so one thing was in my wardrobe, I looked at everything that I had and I saw that most of my most of my color palette for my wardrobe looked like this. And then I said, okay, I want to try these three new colors and, you know, kind of insert them more into my wardrobe. But I never ended up really looking at this page, um, <laughs> which was really sad and kind of a waste of space but it was something I learned from. We also have here all of the movies that I've like never seen, um, like The Godfather, Fight Club, um, Star Wars, 
Terminator, all of those movies, I've actually never seen them. So I wanted to just continue a list and try to make sure that I watched them at some point throughout the year. I honestly never, still haven't seen these movies because I never looked at this page. Um, next up, we were supposed to do cover pages, but I kept forgetting. For the month of January and February, I forgot to make cover pages, so here is just what they looked like. This is kind of what I've heard a lot of people refer to as a monthly dashboard. Um, so we have the January calendar and my ideas for YouTube. Now, you'll see that this ideas page kind of disappears <laughs> later on, but it was really helpful, especially because I had a lot of things that I wanted to do and I didn't really know when to film or to upload them. So it helped with me kind of organizing things. And then I was more into daily spreads and the way that I used my journal in the beginning was sim was essentially this. I had a timetable for each day and then at the very bottom we have this Dutch this mini Dutch door going on to say okay during the week I have this 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 and this to do much like my future log this section helps me a lot with planning ahead but on a micro scale so I did do these spreads one week at a time, so I would, you know, do the lettering for the numbers of the days and cut out my Dutch door, and then if I needed space for journaling, which I was definitely doing at the beginning of the year, I would do that. And something that you'll see happening in the second um, week here is one of the reasons why I switched my methods and that is as you see we have timetables but then we also have a journal entry here and something I realized really soon on <laughs> within the second week was that I didn't have enough space to journal and timetable things in these spreads. So our weekly spreads or daily spreads ended up looking a lot like this because I wanted to continue the Dutch doors but I needed a little bit more space and as you can see we did end up losing space for these days in the middle but I wasn't super upset about that and this shows even more that I really didn't have much space to both timetable and journal so I would start to simply um, make lists or I would journal. It was kind of one or the other and this is where I started to actually do my habit tracker, a mini version. Every day I would create a list of all of the things that I wanted to do and I would cross them out if I didn't do them and check them if I did. So this became my first entry into um, attempting to habit track and the reason I did it like this was because I put them as if they were tasks for the day rather than um, separate things that I could essentially get away from not doing. <laughs> um, so yeah we did a lot of journaling and then this is actually the same month of February but I decided to actually put a full habit tracker on one end and a mood tracker on the other end and then I did cut the bottom parts of this off and soon realized that that was not what I wanted to do and in March we'll see that I kind of fixed that when we came around to March where we have our very first cover page. Um, so as you can see, we still have the Dutch door system, but every other page is cut instead of all of the pages. That way I was able to actually add in the weekly plan that I had in the previous months. And again, our uh, mood tracker and habit tracker on either side. So this way of doing things seems really um, convoluted and kind of you know a little too much and it it may have been um, but it worked for me for the months of February and March and I attempted to continue this style into February and I attempted to continue this style into April and 
this is where I started to kind of fall off when it came to my trackers. So I realized that I needed a different method. I also noticed that I was putting these quotes on my cover pages and going really into detail with all of this design elements and all of that. And then I would never really look at them. So in May, I decided to combine my mood tracker with my cover page. And this allowed me to always come back, always see my quote, always kind of get a fresh start in my mind, even though I would usually fill this out at the end of the day. It was a nice kind of refresher. I also started period tracking on these mini calendars that I have here. and. Although I kind of stopped doing this, I would also, at the end of the month, put whatever my period looked like for this month into my future plan so that I would have my period tracker and future plan as one kind of unit instead of having a completely separate uh, page for it. So here we still have the um, habit tracker on this end but because the mood tracker is now at the cover page this area I used for goals for the month which like I said before I didn't really have those for about two months um, and then I also did like events and to do's so this is where I started to use my habit my so this is where I started to use my future plan a little bit more concisely um, instead of flipping back and forth every week. And that was actually a really nice idea. I, this is also when I started using brain dumps instead of having um, the ideas spread for YouTube. And I also started to do less of the daily spreads and more of the weekly spreads. So every week or every two weeks I would put this area that was just like memories or journaling space for me to simply write things out and in this way I was actually able to keep a lot of things separate and keep my you know schedules and tasks list really clean and free of anything that wasn't um, something that I needed to do or something that was an upcoming event or an appointment. This way I was able to distinguish a lot better between what was work or what was things I needed to do and what was me being free with my thoughts. So now we're moving into June where we actually decided to put not only the mood tracker but also our habit tracker and as you can see I did not do this. <laughs> this whole thing is completely blank and that's fine. Um, I didn't stress myself too much about whether or not I was going to do this or not and I am completely okay. For the mood tracker, this is the first time that I actually had only four colors to use, four or five colors to use. Normally I would have up to eight because I separate sadness depression, feeling sleepy, feeling angry, um, from my other, from other emotions like happiness and complete joy and kind of a neutral position. So in total, I would usually have about eight colors that I was using, but for this spread and for this month, I wanted to keep it relatively simple because I realized that I hadn't really been using <laughs> my mood tracker for my depression, which is a good thing. Um, for May, I definitely did um, use a few, there were a few days in May where, you know, things weren't going that great, but overall, um, I didn't think that it would be completely necessary so I attempted to just do the four um, moods and I wish I hadn't because I did end up feeling really not in the best state of mind throughout this month um, as you can see there's a lot of 
blue, which is my like neutral color, and the gray is kind of sadness, and, or like if I was sleepy, I would actually mark with some Z's next to the number of the day, whether or not I was sleepy that day. Um, and that did work for the most part, but I feel like whether I was sleepy or angry, yeah, I can just mark those next to them for this spread specifically, but in future spreads that might not work so, so well, um, and I'm going to just figure that out as I go. So we attempted to do a budget tracker, this is just something that doesn't work for me. Memories was a really nice thing that I had here and I would love to continue to do this on a regular basis, but I don't know if I'll do it every month. We attempted to do a dinner planner here and this also didn't work because um, I was not in the right mental space to really uh, motivate myself to do things. So here is where we really see the switch from daily to like weekly spreads. Um, so here are like complete weekly spreads and in place of my daily spreads and then a complete journal space. And um, please join me in my next video where I will share with you my new bullet journal, both the setup as well as the July spreads. See you in a few minutes. <laughs> Bye. We had an agreement, you got greedy, then you double back. That's a no-no. How you thought you'd get away with that? If you switching up, I might have